And ladies and gentlemen, uh, simple and straightforward. Our next session simply aims to present perspectives on the much used and abused work smart. And really, what really constitutes a smart approach? Giving uh, the perspective on this, our first speaker is Dr. Sumit Chaudhary. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the founder of Gaia Smart Cities, company focused on telecom and ICT solutions for smart cities. Mr. Chaudhary served as a president at Reliance Geo and vice president and partner of Global Business Services with IBM. India, apart from serving as Chief Information Officer of Reliance Communications, they've studied networks of everything all his life and created a fractal model of explaining how and why things happen to us. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our next speaker, Mr. Sumit Chaudhary. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. So I'm the person that Sarida mentioned about missing the flight and not having the baggage and all of that. So please pardon my casual attire. My talk is not going to be with uh, a lot of slides which talk about deep things. We'll, uh, it's a bit conversational. I have been uh, traveling the world, traveling uh, a lot of cities in India. In the last one year, I'll probably have gone to more than 40 cities which are now calling themselves smart cities or they're preparing themselves to be smart cities. And also done about uh, 10 countries this year looking at this problem and observing what people are doing and feeling the place to see how is it different and how should it be done differently? How have people moved along and added small little things in their day-to-day -day lives which have made an impact? So I, uh, we started Gaia Smart Cities earlier this year and uh, as uh, the name suggests, it's built on this foundation of Gaia. Gaia means everything is connected to each other. The Gaia theory, the Gaia hypothesis uh, was uh, put forward by James Lovelock in 1960s and he said, living and non-living things are connected to each other and they are communicating to keep the earth in balance slightly deviating from what uh, Mr. Joshi said in the thing in the morning, uh, in, the, in the video presentation that you heard, that things are dead. Nothing is dead. Nothing is dead in this, in this hypothesis. Everything is communicating. Oxygen and nitrogen are communicating with each other. Plants and animals are communicating with each other. I think uh, Mr. Kapadia talked about the floating cities and, and uh, Avatar, Pandora. Pandora is built on this whole concept of Gaia, where the plants and animals and people, vehicles, everything is communicating with each other. Thank you. So this week, I was in, I've been in three cities. I started off in Bucharest in Romania. And uh, what did I find? I, as soon as, I'll tell you how small things matter, how cities are thinking about themselves differently, how they are integrating various aspects of the city, life, and commerce, government, everybody coming together, small little things. So I, I walk out and I get into the cab. I took five cabs, all of them had magazines which were to do with the country, all the companies, their performance, investments, every cab had that. Now when you're sitting there, you're reading, you're getting a lot of information. I'll give you an example of Istanbul and Turkey last night. The business class lounge, Wi-Fi password is invest in Turkey. Now, just imagine every senior person who's passing through the country is actually saying it while they are adding all their device, invest in Turkey. Now, how difficult would it have been to integrate this thought of uh, Ministry of Aviation talking to our uh, Department of IT or some private player who doesn't want to cross over and give this little piece how do you get all the cab drivers to add this little book in booklet? If it's a booklet, it has to be given by the government, so it'll look not so good. Like this was a completely, the one in uh, Bucharest was a complete 
colorful brochure which was worth reading. It was, it, it was inviting me to read. I actually wanted to change it. I thought there was a break in the middle and New Delhi would have been changed to Yunchuan in China. Uh, Yunchuan in China started about, it's a small little city just south of, uh, south of uh, Mongolia. And that city had, about 15 years ago, they decided to form a new city like Raipur and Naya Raipur, same time. Both the countries, middle of nowhere city decides that they need a new city. And you should see what has been achieved in terms of integrating the old and the new. Yes, we talk about China, we look down upon it. I went in with that same viewpoint when I went in. I said, oh, it must be an empty city. It must have been built with a lot of money and nobody really bothered. But if you think about the things that they have thought through, thought through, consciousness, the things that they have planned, how streets from one end is going to connect to the other, how vehicles are going to come from one side and turn, even in the old city and the new city. It's not like Raipur and Naya Raipur where you come through a six-lane highway and it becomes a one-lane highway after that. It's not like garbage is going to be collected in one place and not connected in the other place. It is the same uniform services. If you see how Raipur and Naya Raipur are talking about each other, you'll be ashamed because you're going to have a city which is totally opposite of each other, right next to each other. One of them says, I want government funds. Others, one it says, I don't want government funds. It's a lot of integration in thinking which is required on what we do. So if you look at this conference, it's about society. It's not about technology and only about the city. It's not about architecture. It is about society. And societies have been of two types. The physical one, which is essentially based on geographies, community areas of uh, buildings, or you have the logical one, which is people with common interests. And when you get them together, you're basically creating a network, a network of like-minded citizens, a network of communities, a network of cities, network of global cities. We hear a lot, but we still have to make the leap of saying, how do you connect a network? How do you share information? How do you get across ideas which are there in one place to the other place? Almost none of you would have learned everything from scratch, right? You would have seen somebody else doing it and move and done it themselves. So basically, that's our whole concept of how do you create networks of cities, networks of uh, communities, and then therefore, networks of all the things that are associated and connected to each other. I'll give you an example of parking. If you take what and how we do parking over here, we break it up into small pieces. We give independent operators small, small areas of land in which they do. Absolutely good for entrepreneurship, but creates subsistence level entrepreneurship. It is not scalable entrepreneurship. I was in Istanbul where the entire city, though being operated on by local people, had a common way in which parking was done. Common way in which you send an SMS or you send, a, you press a few buttons there and you are able to park in a particular street. Either it is free or it is paid, but both being done in the same way. It is convenient for you. You can then have independent small entrepreneurs who are operating it in, and giving you tickets or whatever that needs to be done in the local place. We do it opposite. We start off by assuming that there is a lot of people and we need to generate employment for a lot of people, so therefore break the problem down into small, small pieces. China also has that problem. I landed in the Inchuan airport, huge airport being built. Three people came cleared the entire luggage, entire staff over here. If you look at how when a plane lands, at least 30, 35 people show up, and there are people all over the place. See, we, we build solutions thinking that we need to put in people all over the place to do the process. We are not baking technology into our processes, right? So we need, if you take a look at any connected group, and we want to make it a conscious society. Conscious means where you're thinking about things. A conscious group is one that is aware, aware of its problems. It observes. It observes the various things that are going on. How is parking happening? How is travel happening? How is playgrounds happening? It is aware. It observes. And it measures. This concept of measurement was mentioned also by Mr. Joshi earlier today. If you do not measure anything, you will not improve it. If you want to improve it, you need to measure it measure 
how fast you're going, how many people are playing. And this measurement creates the financial structure on which these things are going to be paid. A lot of projects fail because we are not able to measure the benefits. We are not able to measure who is getting benefited and who is doing what they are doing. So if we can introduce measurement in everything, everything becomes financially viable. You, you might be knowing that more than a million um, light bulbs in the last year alone has been changed into LED. And most of these projects have been done at zero cost to the government. Zero cost. All light bulbs are being changed. Why? Because people have now become capable of. Technology has made it possible for you to measure how much electricity was being burned before and how much the electricity bulb is going to cost. And once you move to a LED, you continue measurement and you are able to give, give 35, 45, 65, 85 percent savings back to the city. That is what is paying for infrastructure. That is how we are going to be able to measure and make it financially viable for a lot of projects. If you look at what is happening in this smart city, 100 projects that are going on, we will identify a location, some builder is going to come and take away that piece of land, the benefit is going to go to somebody, but the services have to be provided by somebody else. It's going to be economically unviable. In most other places, they have integrated the ownership of land along with the cost of the doing the project, and therefore, the increase in the land prices have paid for the entire project. So finance is not a problem. Ideas are. Profiteering is a problem. We need to, but again, all of it comes back to measurement and correction. A robot which does not learn is a, is a good robot, maybe, but it's not a smart robot. A smart robot learns. It is improving itself. So anything that is smart in my uh, philosophy of what we are trying to do is to, is to look at how to improve something, how to look at the data that is coming in, how to analyze it, how to feed it back into the system, how do you create feedback loops from what is happening to improve the services that are there, and therefore you being, become slightly more conscious about your activities. You start to bring in these small little nuances. The password in the Wi-Fi is a small little thing but it was so integrated into the thinking of how, who will come, where will they come, how will they use it, and how do we touch the people who are going to invest in the country. And when you keep doing it, you become smarter. It's not about technology per se, it is about using the technology to improve everything that you're doing day in and day out. Not just technology, by putting in your measurement into everything that you are doing. How many of you are running the marathon tomorrow? You know, I was supposed to, but I don't have my clothes, so I'm going to let <laughs> others do. But if you don't measure yourself, you do not know how fast you're going. And all marathoners will tell you that the first time or the second time you might do it just to complete the course, but the third, fourth, fifth, tenth, fifteenth time that you run, you actually run to improve whatever you are running last time. And that is what we are talking about, that these changes are like marathons. You've got to measure yourself and improve. So, if you take a look at this whole process of becoming smart, it's actually a process and a mindset. You've got locals who have to absolutely buy in to whatever ideas you've got. They've got to own it. You cannot do a surgical insertion of an idea into a community. You just can't. It is not sustainable. Nature does not support a surgical insertion of anything unless it is absorbed by the local community, the local ecosystem. The local government has to be absolutely part of it and the local businesses. You have to take them along in the journey and the idea might be different in different locations, but you have to bring everybody along. But we have looked at it slightly different in the past of saying, what will the central government do? Before the central government created the smart city project, there were about two or three projects that were going on which called themselves smart. But before th that, the locals would have been suggesting various things. We at least now have a framework in which some of these projects can be put together. But it should not be exclusive. It should not be such that if you did not write it in the proposal, it will not get done. It should be such that we allow innovation from each local community to come in, from local businesses to come in. Only then we can have global businesses and global funding to come in. Thank you Cisco and IBM for pushing this agenda for the last five years 
to make this vocabulary available for the rest of the world. But they are not going to be running this thing. They are not going to be living this thing. They are going to provide technology, certainly. They are going to bring us the networks of technology that is being used by the rest of the world. But we need to look at it holistically, bring everybody who, uh, who's mentioned into this whole paradigm. Sumit, sorry to interrupt. You have another two minutes. Absolutely. I've got one more slide. So it should be okay. So we are going to, I was going to mention a, a couple of towns in India who have taken a leap of what is going to, what is happening. I mean, I'll just use this word called Shirpur in Maharashtra. How many of you have heard of Shirpur? It's a small little town, 75,000 people. Maharashtra is having a drought, but this city is surplus. They don't have any drought. All their streetlights are LED already. They have got measured, metered water provided to them. 98% of them pay their taxes on time. Small little town. How have they been doing it? What have they done which others cannot replicate? They've all got together. 75,000 people of which 30,000 are in education. Lots of education institutes there. Everybody is either in high school or lower, uh, junior school, high school or, or college. 10,000 of them are working. Similar companies in and around their neighborhood. So integrated neighborhoods have got created. Water, simple things that they have done. Again, consciousness. You know when we dig uh, water lines, we do it on one side of the road. They have done it on both sides of the road so that the road which is supposed to have a life, uh, lifespan of 20 years doesn't get dug because somebody is crossing the line across. It doesn't cost much to lay water lines on both sides of the road, but it costs a lot to keep repairing the roads. Simple things that have made life very interesting. So basically what I want to talk about and finish off is that we have to connect citizens, business and government for the same reasons that uh, uh, Angshik talked about is to improve transparency for the government, is to improve the velocity of the business, as well as to improve the quality of life of citizens. We have to create a learning and growing relationship and you have to take ownership. And that is something that is just starting to happen in India and I'm quite hopeful because of this whole process of getting the proposals up. We have seen a lot of citizens interaction and we'll see how the sharing of information between humans, machines and processes, which is what Internet of Things is all about. It is about the, the process automation, identity, all of those things are going to come in handy when we look at this integration between people, process, as well as um, machines. And then creating this learning culture to improve. So in short, we have to see this process of becoming a conscious city and becoming a conscious person and a conscious community. You've got to start looking at it holistically and add that one minute extra thought when you're building a road or building a building or building any uh, infrastructure at that presence of mind. Create coordinated projects. I almost have suggested this many times to various, uh, at least the state governments right now, is to have a coordinating ministry which brings together projects which are from multiple departments. Fourth point is very important. Today we have a lot of friction between where private projects finished or semi-private projects finish and where public projects start or public infrastructure starts. This friction causes problem for you and me. Where a road finishes and a private house started or a housing complex starts, the, the roads, the infrastructure is full of friction. You will see this difference between these two. We need to start building. This doesn't happen in Europe. This doesn't happen in many other countries where they have, have this seamlessness between where a mall finishes and a house starts. Or where a, and it is being done by different developers. It has been done by different people. The central government, the state government takes ownership of creating this frictionless movement between private, public and semi-public land. If you take a look at how we are doing parks, it has got the same problem. What is park, who's maintaining and who's managing it causes a lot of fric friction. And we have to create this common architecture through which we can leverage the commonalities of data, uh, commonalities of transport and intelligence. Thank you.